97 through 104. This week is the Hispanic door knocking campaign, June 6th through the 9th, and we will provide lunch and dinner Saturday the 8th. Vacation Bible School is scheduled Saturday and Sunday, June 22nd and 23rd. If you're interested in teaching, please see Joe. The Gateway Area Bible Camp is July 7th through the 13th. Applications are available online. If you have any questions, please check with Jamie. Next week, after the evening service, potluck meal and wedding shower for Gretchen and Brett. Please bring main dishes and sides. And my wife said, bring them in nice dishes, because keep in mind, this is a wedding shower. Uh, there's also a wedding shower for Tori and Brandon, Saturday, July 13th at 1 o'clock here at the building. There is a gospel meeting scheduled in House Springs, July 7th through the 10th. And please add to your prayer list, Deanna Dotson. She's in St. Joseph Hospital in St. Charles. She had bleeding caused by 20 ulcers in her upper digestive tract. No, that doesn't sound pleasant. Uh, she's also having kidney issues due to dehydration. So please keep her in, her, in your prayers. And she's asking at this time uh, for no visitors. So we'll let you know as she progresses and gets better. This time we'll start with our scripture reading. Again, the scripture reading is taken from Psalms chapter 119, verses 97 through 104. Oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all the day. You, through your commandments, make me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for your testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the ancients, because I keep your <coughs> precepts. I have restrained my feet from every evil way, that I may keep your word. I have not departed from your judgments, for you yourself have taught me. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through your precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. <clears throat> We're opening song number 298. I'm not ashamed, oh my Lord. Psalm before our opening prayer, be number 193. Guide me, O thou great Jehovah. Let us sing. Guide me, O thou great Jehovah.
Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, as we gather together to worship you, to sing these songs of praises to you, to think about your word, think about its application in our lives, and how much love you have for us and how much love you have shown to us through your grace and through the sacrifice of your Son. We praise you, O God, and we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for this opportunity we have to gather together with other Christians and with people of like mind in order to spend this time in assembly. And we thank you, Lord God, for many blessings that we have at this time. We certainly have the blessing of being in your Son, being in Christ. We have the blessing of knowing uh, your Bible and understanding it and be able to apply it to our lives. And we know that we have the church here as a place to, to come and not only to worship, but also to work and to be able to do those things necessary to strengthen our faith and to help others. This is a time of a family. We have a lot of uh, families visiting with us uh, this morning. And it's great to have uh, the opportunity to come together and, and spend time together. And we pray for this uh, summertime certainly is a time of travel and that you're with all of our family and all of our loved ones as they uh, make these trips and vacations and, and time of, of spending time in each other's presence. And we thank you, Lord God, for the blessing of family. For through family, we can understand more about our relationship with you. And we understand the, the great love that we can have for, for you through the great love we have for our children and for our spouses and for our families. And we thank you, Lord God, for the opportunity we have to come to you in prayer, to be able to pray for things that we are thankful for, but also things that, are, that we hope will happen. Uh, we certainly pray for those that are on our, prayer, on our uh, list of uh, people that are, that are suffering, they're injured. We pray for those who have lost loved ones. There's many of us who have lost uh, people that we dearly hold in our hearts. And we know that your comfort and your strength is with us. We also think of those that are ill. We think of Deanna, especially this time, and, and of course, Cindy uh, Derryberry, uh, as, as she's going through uh, her treatments, and hopefully they'll have them have some effect for her. But many others need your healing hand, and we pray that uh, you're with them and watching over them, being with the doctors and the other medical people that, uh, that serve them. And we thank you for the medical knowledge we have at this time and the knowledge that continues to grow as people came to understand the, uh, the human body that you created and uh, understand the ability to, to be able to repair it. We thank you, Lord, for forgiveness. Without it, we would not be able to have a hope of being in heaven. We uh, truly repent of those things we need in our lives to be rid of. And we ask, O oh Lord God, that you have patience with us and, and encourage us and give us the days necessary to, to do the work here we should. And then we should go on to paradise and one day the resurrection. We ask for that blessing upon all those who serve this country in many capacities, certainly our military people, we pray for them and their families and hope that they are, are being uh, protected and comforted in, in all the opportunities that uh, the car come our way to be a support to them. Help us this day to do your will. Help us this day to love each other. Help us this day to be the kind of children you'd want us to be. We pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Our song of invitation will be number 760. Who will follow Jesus? Psalm before our lesson, we number 585, Soldiers of Christ Arise. Let us stand as we sing. <clears throat> Soldiers of Christ Arise.
Thank you, John. It is uh, uh, good to be back um, this Sunday, and we certainly appreciate uh, J.C. And, and Joey for uh, speaking last Sunday. It's um, always a comforting thing to know that uh, when uh, I am away, that we have men here that can step up and can faithfully proclaim the word. And I don't have to be concerned uh, about uh, the message that is being proclaimed and what am I going to deal with when I get back home. And so, that, listen, that is very uh, encouraging and comforting to me, and not just with those two, but we have many others here, and as we have stated before concerning this congregation of God's people, uh, it is uh, truly an indication of certainly dedication and growth of uh, so many here that are able to step forth and to faithfully certainly proclaim God's word. That from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. No doubt, one of, if not the greatest passage in the New Testament dealing with the Scripture itself. Because in that passage, we have the fact that the Bible is a very product of God. It has been penned by inspiration. It is powerful. It certainly is able to save our souls. It is profitable to us. It is greatly beneficial. And what a great blessing it is to us as we read and study and meditate upon God's Word. It can provide for us that which we need in this life to be what God wants us to be and to do what God wants us to do. Oh, how love I thy law. Psalm 119 and verse 97 in the scripture reading this morning. And as you read and study through that section, we see the emphasis the psalmist is putting upon the attitude that we are to have toward God's Word, the devotion that we are to have toward God's Word, the dedication that we are to have toward God's Word. And that section in our scripture reading this morning ends in verse 104, and the psalmist said that through thy precepts I get understanding, and therefore I hate every false way. Through thy precepts I get understanding. The question is asked from time to time, is it possible for anyone to understand God's 
will. Do I have to be some type of, in other words, do I have to be a part of the, quote unquote, the hierarchy? Do I, do I have to be a preacher? Do I have to be whoever, something different than someone else, in order to properly understand the Scripture? Now, we expect the elders in the church to understand the Scripture. We certainly expect the preacher. We expect our teachers to understand the Scripture. I know that it is the mindset of some people that everyone cannot properly understand the Scripture. And even if people do understand the Scripture, then this individual can come up with an understanding of it completely different than this individual here. And in the mindset of some people, that's okay. I understand it a certain way. You understand it a certain way. Somebody else understands it a completely different way than others have. But in the mindset of God, some people believe and they think that this is how God planned this. That God never expected and God certainly never desired for all men to come to an understanding of God's Word to the extent that we believe the same thing, that we teach the same thing, that we practice the same thing. God does not expect that to happen. That's the mindset of some people. It is impossible, and we're going to demonstrate that as we began this series of lessons. It is impossible to understand the Bible, and we all not be alike. Now, I know, and you know, that there are some things that we can never understand. And, of course, Deuteronomy 29, 29 points that out, doesn't it? The secret things belong to the Lord our God. But then it says, but those things which are revealed belong to us. I find it amazing sometimes how people want to dwell on, how people want to spend so much time on things that we cannot know because God has not revealed that to us. If you don't get into a conversation or an argument with people, then bring up this question. Why did Nicodemus come to Jesus by night? And you ask that question, and you have all kinds of answers. The only problem with that is that the Scripture does not reveal that to us. And that's why you have all kinds of answers. And yet some people, will, well, they, they want to argue about that. They want to get into great big discussion about that. But remember, please, there are some things that God does not desire for us, and we cannot know. But only those things, and the key there is, 
those things which are revealed. Secondly, let's remember that as we read and study and meditate upon God's Word, there are some things that are difficult to understand. How do I know that? Well, it is revealed. The Apostle Peter writes in 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 16. He says there are some things, in fact, referring to some of the very things that the Apostle Paul wrote. He says they are hard to be understood. Now that's telling me that when we read some things, we're not really going to grasp that just by reading the words. Now, no, please. He did not say that they were impossible. To understand. But it said there are some things that are hard to be understood. And then, as we open up this book, and as we read and study and meditate upon it, we know there are some things that God demands, certainly that we come to know and understand. And they are clearly given to us, they are clearly revealed to us in His will. You remember the words in John 8, 32, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. God desires for all of mankind to be free. That is free from sin. And God desires all men to be saved, does he not? First Timothy 2 and verse 4. Who have all men to be saved and to come, I notice, and to come unto the what? Misunderstanding? And to come unto what? The knowledge of the truth. To know means to perceive. It means to properly understand. And so when Jesus states there in John 8, 32, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free, and that's telling me and you and everyone else since it is God's desire for us to be set free, and only by setting free we have to come to know His Word, that's telling me that I can understand what His will is so that I can be delivered or set free from sin. Can we understand the Scripture? Do we understand the Scripture? Those are two different questions. And just because a person states, yes, we can understand, does not mean that that person does understand. Let's look at this, begin to look at this, this morning, by... Noticing, first of all, that understanding the Scripture is reachable. It is within my reach. It is within your reach to understand the Scripture. Secondly, we will be noticing reasons 
for understanding the scripture. And then number three, we'll be noticing the rewards for understanding the scripture. There are reasons that we can and should understand. And certainly it is very rewarding when we do come to understand the scripture. Can it be a reality? Is this something that is within our reach? That is to understand the scripture. And I will state at the very beginning that it is possible, it is within our reach, and it can be a reality in our life. How do I know that? How do I know that this is reachable? Let's notice the precepts and the principles of God as revealed in Scripture. By the very precepts and the principles of God as revealed in Scripture, we can know that this is reachable. Now let's look at various Scriptures to back this up. In Matthew chapter 4, we have the account there, verses 1 through 11. And you recall that this is dealing with the temptation of our Lord. And three times he was tempted by the devil. And with each temptation, you recall that Jesus said, it is written. Now, when you notice the first temptation to cast or to change these stones into bread, and notice how the devil is attacking him. You see, Jesus is hungry. He has been fasting. And no doubt he's thinking, if I'm going to get him, this would be a good place to start. You see, the devil attacks us at what he perceives to be our weakest point. Jesus is hungry. And so the devil says, cast these stones into bread. If thou be the Son of God, do that. And you recall how Jesus responded to that temptation. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone. But now notice, you know the words, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Jesus says, man shall not live by bread alone. Well, what is he saying there? He says, here is how man not only should live, but here's how man must live. We must live by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. How am I to live? How are you to live? By every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And so if I'm going to live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, if you're going to live by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God, that means what? That means that I must 
understand and know the Word of God. I cannot live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. You cannot live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God unless I and you understand what God's will is. Does that make sense? Well, whether it makes sense or not, it's true. You can't do it. It's impossible. Now, I, I want to state here at the very beginning, this is not brain surgery. Sometimes people want to make this very difficult. It's not difficult to see and understand what the Bible teaches about this matter. Well, you go over to Matthew chapter 19. And read about some who came to Jesus and asked him this question. Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? Now you remember in studying the life of Jesus that he, on a different occasion, questions were asked of the Lord. Many times they were asked, not really looking for answers that will be beneficial to them from a spiritual standpoint, but they were looking for answers from the Lord that they could use against them. So they could attack him. So the question is asked, is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? Now how did Jesus deal with that question? Have ye not read that he was made them at the beginning, made them both male and female. Now, what I want to emphasize there in that answer that the Lord gave is simply these words. Have ye not read? When Jesus asked, have you not read? That word, read, read, is talking about understanding, having knowledge of. In other words, this is something I know that you know. That's the idea there. It's not something, okay, have you not read? A lot of times people go, well, I read that, but I just didn't pay that much attention to it. I read that, but I didn't understand it. That's not what Jesus is emphasizing here. Have you not read? I know you have. I know you know, and I know you understand what God's plan is for man and woman when it comes to marriage. Let's go over to Matthew 22 and verse 29. There are some people who did not believe, who did not accept some of the things, of course, our Lord taught. Notice these words. Matthew 22, 29. Jesus says, Ye do err, not knowing the Scriptures, nor the power of God. Ye do err, not knowing the Scripture. Now, if it is the case, not knowing the Scripture, therefore not understanding the Scripture in a certain way is all right, 
Why did Jesus say that ye do err, not knowing the Scripture? I said, if I don't know the Scripture, if I don't understand God's will, what will that lead to? Will that lead to me believing, practicing, proclaiming truth? No. If I don't know the Scripture, that will lead to believing, teaching, and practicing truth. Those things that are error. Then we ask this question. Does Jesus want me to err? Does Jesus want me to be in error? Or does he want me to know and to live by the truth? You know the answer. Then we go through the book of Matthew, continue. And we come to Matthew chapter 28. For Jesus said in verse 18, All authority, all power is given unto me in heaven and earth. I know it's these words. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Ethnos, every ethnic group. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded of you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age of the world. What is the obligation? That Jesus has laid up on those who are his disciples. He says, go teach. Now you couple that with Mark chapter 16. Mark's account of what we refer to as the Great Commission. And Jesus said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel." Question, can I teach, can I preach the gospel if I don't understand it? Can I teach them, make disciples of those who have been obedient to the gospel? Can I teach them to observe all things he says, what's there I commanded of you if I don't understand it? Can you do that? And we're talking about preaching or teaching the gospel. We're talking about preaching and teaching the truth. Now, I'm not saying that it is impossible for people to teach and preach who don't know really anything about the Scripture. Because we do see that sometimes. And when Jesus says here to preach and teach, he's not saying to preach and teach just anything, but he's talking about preaching and teaching the gospel that is the truth. And that is impossible if I don't understand it. It can't be done. In John chapter 12 and verse 48, Jesus said, He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him the word that I have spoken. The same shall judge him in the last day. We know the judgment day is coming. That is taught over and over in the Scripture. 
And Jesus says, you're going to be judged according to my word. Paul reminds us, does it not, in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 10, that we're going to give an account of the things done in the body, whether it be good or bad, good or evil. Now, if I'm going to be judged by the word, and if you are going to be by the, judged by the word, that is, if every accountable person going to be judged by the word does not that in and of itself demand that I have to understand it if God has told us and he has you're going to be judged by the words of the Lord but you can't understand them really How could we be judged by his words if we can't understand them? Oh, God has the power to present his will to us in a manner that we can understand it, but he didn't do it. God loved us so much that he wants us to go to heaven and be with him and we can learn, and we can know what we need to do, but he's presented in such a way that we can't understand it. Is that what God has done? Of course not. If I'm going to be judged by the word, and you're going to be judged by the word, we are. That means we must understand. Many other signs, truly did Jesus, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye may have life, you might have life through his name. Can I understand? Can you understand that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God? Yes. By the evidence, by the proof that is presented in the Word of God. That's the reason why the book of John was written. To give forth evidence, to give forth proof that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And that's why Jesus said in John 5, 39, Search the Scriptures. For in them you think you have life, and they are that which testify of me. Now, if I can't understand the Scripture, then how can I come to believe that he is the Christ, the Son of God? And yet, that's what he demands that I do. Let's look at one other passage. We'll continue with this this evening. In Acts chapter 8, in other words, we're looking at the very precepts and the principles of God and sentences so that we can see that understanding the Bible is reachable. Read about the conversion of the Ethiopian eunuch. You remember, he was in his chariot. Left Jerusalem, he is headed home. And Philip the evangelist runs to him. And Philip the evangelist asks him this question. He saw he was reading from Scripture, reading from Isaiah. And Philip asked this question, Understandest thou what thou readest? Why did Philip ask that question? If it is impossible to understand the Scripture. Philip is a man, as you read about earlier, he's full of the Holy Spirit. And so when he asks a question, he knows why he's asking that question.
I noticed how the Ethiopian responded to him. The Ethiopian did not say to Philip, Now, sir, I think you are all mixed up. I think you're really confused. Oh, yes, I was reading these words here. I really know, and I, I can't understand them anyway. But I'm just spending time, you know, you're just riding along, so I've got to do something. So I'm just reading these words. I really can't understand them. So why do you ask me that question, can I understand? That's not what he said. Not only did Philip understand that the Ethiopian could understand what he was reading, the Ethiopian also understood that he could understand what he was reading. Because Philip got into his chariot and began to explain to him what he was reading. Now, this reminds us all that sometimes we need some help to understand. We need some help. The Ethiopian needed some help. And it's evident that he came to understand what he was reading. And we know what that led to, don't we? As you read there in Acts chapter 8. See, here is water. What doth hindereth me from being baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest, thou mayest. Ethiopian said, I believe that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, Stop the chariot. They both got out of the chariot. They both went down to the water, and Philip baptized him. And he went on his way, Ethiopian, went on his way rejoicing. Why was he rejoicing? Because he came to understand the truth about Jesus and about what he has to offer. And that's true of anyone today who comes to understand about who Jesus is, and what Jesus has done for us, and what he has to offer for us. We can understand that. This morning, John is about to lead us in this song. It is a song of encouragement. God loves us without question. We know that he commended his love toward us while we're yet sinners. Yes, Christ died for us, Romans 5 and verse 8. We know of his great love. We know of his great grace, his mercy that he's extended to all of mankind. He says, I want you to be saved. But you have to understand. You have to understand and come to know what my will is. And as you come to understand and know my will, then you have to do it. The Lord makes it very clear, does he not? Yes, we have to hear his word. That's the beginning. And as we come to hear and understand what his will is, that leads to faith. That faith then ought to lead us to repent of our sins to correct things that are wrong in our lives. And we gladly let others know that we believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. He is now going to be the Lord of my life. And therefore, I want to be with Him. I want to put on Christ. I want to walk in His footsteps. I want to be in Him. I want every spiritual blessing. Ephesians 1 and verse 3. And I know I can only have them if I'm in Jesus Christ. And therefore, I'm buried with the Lord in baptism. To be raised to walk in newness of life. Becoming a new creature, a new creation. Living now in hope of that beautiful place called heaven. This morning... If you haven't yet obeyed the gospel, we encourage you to render obedience while you have the time and opportunity to do so. But as a child of God, if there's sin in your life, I know that you know, I know that you understand 
that God desires, God demands faithfulness. Not sinlessness, but he does demand faithfulness as long as we live. If that has not been true, let's do something about it this morning. While together we stand and as we sing. Who will follow Jesus standing for the right? To prepare our minds for the partaking of the Lord's Supper, we'll sing number 621. 621, 10,000 angels. We'll sing the first four stanzas and then the chorus.
Shall we pray? Lord, we thank thee for giving us another day and opportunity to be here before thee, to remember the great sacrifice your son gave for us. Pray now as we take this bread and remember the body nailed to that cross, that we will remember this always throughout our days. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Continuing our prayer, our Father, we thank you for this fruit of the vine, which represents your son's blood that he shed on the cross for remission of sin. We pray, Father, that we will uh, examine ourselves uh, as we partake of this fruit of the vine, that we will take it in a manner as pleasing unto thee. Through Christ's name we pray, amen. Separate and apart from the Lord's Supper, we're also commanded to lay by in store. Would you please uh, bow with me as we go to God in prayer? 
Most kind and loving Heavenly Father, we're so thankful to be able to return a portion of what you have so richly blessed us with. Father, we have so much, and, and Father, we pray that we cheerful, cheerfully return a portion of that to you, and, and we do so with glad and cheerful hearts, not begrudgingly. Father, all this we ask in your Son's name. Amen. We appreciate everyone's attendance here this morning, especially any visitors. We hope that you can come be with us at any opportunity that you have in the future. Please remember our Sunday evening worship service tonight at 5, our midweek Bible study at 7 o'clock. Uh, in closing, we're going to sing number 727, We Shall See the King Someday. After this song, we'll have our closing prayer. We'll sing the first and last stanza. Let us stand as we sing. Though the way we turn may be up and drear, we shall see the king someday. Of his blessed morning, while the leaves appear, we shall see the king someday. We shall see the king someday. Will you bow with me, please? Dear Heavenly Father, how grateful and thankful we are for another opportunity we have to come together to worship you in spirit and in truth. We pray that all things we've done here this morning uh, were done in accordance with your will. Father, we are mindful of those that are on our prayer list, and we ask that you attend to their needs as it's fitting to your will. Father, we're thankful for the message that we heard this morning. We're thankful for the uh, ability that we have to understand the scripture, that we can apply it to our lives, and that we might know how to please you and how to live in a way that would be uh, uh, fitting for your service. Help us, Father, each and every moment to continue to keep that in the forefront of our, our minds and to continue to answer each temptation uh, with that it, uh, it is written. Father, as we depart from here, help us to uh, take advantage of the opportunities we have before us this afternoon uh, to share the truth and the gospel and to uh, lean upon uh, your word for uh, the challenges that we face. All these things we pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen.